Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our River of God online Sunday service. I am more than happy that we are together and I hope and pray that you had a blessed week. I am inviting you to rise to your feet. I shall be reading a portion of scripture and then we shall pray and then we shall officially begin our service. I am reading from the book of Psalms chapter 16 and verse 11 and this is what the psalmist says. He says, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. David here is saying that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And therein, when you choose to dwell there, the Lord makes known to you the path of life and then blesses you with eternal pleasures. I pray that today you and your family shall choose to dwell in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray together. Father, in the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, we give glory and honor to you, Father. Thank you for the opportunity that you have given us, Almighty Father. Though we are distanced from each other, though by the Spirit of God, Father, we are together. And I know that today, my Father and my God, we are together, Jehovah, as we begin this service. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that each and every one who's watching from home, my Father and my God, that you shall be able, Almighty King of all glory, to bless them this Sunday, Jehovah as a family, as a couple, even as an individual Jehovah God. May your presence fill their home, Lord God Almighty. And may you make known to them, Jehovah, the paths of life, my God. May you fill them with joy and with eternal pleasures, Almighty Father. May they receive from you this Sunday, my God. Bless every family, bless every marriage, bless all the children who are watching, my Father and my God. Bless the businesses and the job careers, Almighty Father, God of all glory, that are being represented today, my God. We lift up your holy name and declare that there is no other God but you, Father. We commit the praise and worship, Almighty Father. We commit the reading of the word and the speaker there of Jehovah, that you shall fill them with more of you, my God, even as we lift up the name of the Most High God. Father, there is no other God but you and you alone. And it is unto you, my Father and my God, we commit this service and ourselves. This we have prayed, believing and trusting in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everybody said, Amen, amen and amen. amen. Let us begin, church. Oh, 
you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Who has the final say in your life? Jehovah. Who has the final say in your life? Jehovah. Give him all the praise. Hallelujah.
are the God who turns things around for us, Lord. You are a God who is faithful. Open our eyes to see you, Lord. Open our eyes to know you, Lord. To see you. To see you, Lord. High and lifted up, Lord. Be exalted in our lives, O oh God. Because of who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Let's sing holy. Holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise. There is none that compares to you. you in front in front of my melodies you are all that matters you are all that matters I'll make room for two you and I Jesus you are all that matters you are all that matters Oh, hey, oh, you are all that matters. Oh, hey, oh, hey. you are all that matters. Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, you are all that matters. Oh, hey, What would I live for? What would I live for if I don't have you in my life? What would I gain if you take your Holy Ghost? What would have become of me if I didn't see your life? What would have been said of me if you didn't hold my hands now i've come to realize that you are all i have you are all that matters you are all that matters i put you in front i put you in front in front in front of my melody you are all that matters. I make room for two. I make room for two. You and I, you and I, Jesus. You are all the matter. You are all the matter. Sing away. Away, oh. You are all the matter. Away. Sing away. You are all that matters. Is it a house or is it a car? I give them all to you. Is it the name or is it the fame? I'm nothing without you What would have become of me If I didn't see your life What would have been said of me If you didn't hold my hand Now I've come to realize That you are all I have You are I'll make room for two You and I, Jesus You are all that matters You are all that matters I'll put you 
this morning and especially those that are tuned in for the very first time this is river of god church we welcome you to our online service we bless the lord for another opportunity and the privilege to minister to you virtually even as we wait for the resumption of the physical gathering that we may once again come together and just celebrate with each other as we worship the lord let me offer a special welcome to those that are tuned in for the very first time especially Perhaps you are not even a member of this church, but you found yourself tuned in this morning. We don't take it for granted, and we know that it is the Lord's plan that you are tuned in this morning. It is not a coincidence, but a God incident. Amen. Welcome, each and every one. We are into the ninth month of the year 2020, the month of September. If you are a member of River of God Church, you know this is the month of legends. And this morning, I've got a couple of legends we want to celebrate their birthdays. And on my list, I've got Mr. Clifton White, a member of our media team. We bless the Lord for you, my brother. God bless you. We pray that the Lord continued blessing you, even together with Washira Gidanda. God bless you, my brother. Luke Mbithi. Camila Zomolo, happy birthday. Christopher Ndishu, happy birthday, Governor. Griffin Basu, one of our members of staff here. We bless the Lord for you. Brian Ocheng, a member of our ROG security team. We bless the Lord for you, brother. George Mbatia, happy birthday. Elizabeth Ndonga, happy birthday, my friend. And last but not least, 
Asad Sadiq, one of the leaders of our Asian Fellowship and Ministry. We bless the Lord for you and Sadiq actually let me know that it was his birthday and he sends greetings to every member of River of God Church and he actually says that he misses each and every one of you. That's Sadiq for you. Happy birthday, Sadiq. Amen. <laughs> and now as we prepare to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings, we invite each and every one of you to, you know, just prepare your hearts, even with that which you prepared to worship the Lord this morning. And I'm going to invite us to pray and give thanks for the offerings. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name this morning. We give you praise and all the glory, Almighty God. Father, thank you for the gift of life and the gift of health, Almighty God. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity, Almighty God, to gather virtually, Almighty God, to worship you and to fellowship with one another, Almighty God. Father, we pray that in, in your own time, O oh God, you will make it possible for us to gather as your church, Almighty God, and just be an encouragement to one another. Father, this morning as we bring our tithes and our offerings and our gifts of love, Almighty God, how I pray that these gifts shall be pleasing and acceptable before you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray a blessing over the offerings of your people. Bless each and every hand that gives, Almighty God. And that person who may be desiring, Lord, to worship you in this form, O oh God. And Lord, this morning they don't have something to give. Father, we commit them into your hands, Almighty God, in this coming week. The Lord, you remember them according to your mercy and grace, Almighty God. Bless them, Lord, that next time they will be able to worship you with their substance, Almighty God. Father, as we sit at, the feet, at your feet, Almighty God, to listen to your servant, even as he ministers to us, we pray for him, Lord, that you would minister to him and through him, Almighty God. Father, may your words that proceed out of his mouth, Almighty God, accomplish the purpose for which you have spoken them and intended them, Almighty God. Jehovah God, we pray for all those that are tuned in from wherever in the world, Almighty God, that you may minister to each and every person, Almighty God. Meet with each and every one of us at our point of need. Father God, we commit our country into your hands, Almighty God. How I pray that your will will be done in our country. Commit those in leadership into your hands, Almighty God. Help us, Almighty God, even as we continue to believe and trust that normalcy shall be restored to our nation very soon. Father, we bless you and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now here are some announcements from our media team before we welcome Pastor to preach the word of God. Amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome to the River of God Church. Our vision is to be a life-transforming church that proclaims the Kingdom of God. Our mission is to reach people for Christ, refresh believers by the Word of God, refine believers for good works and release believers to transform the world. It's now time to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. For Impesa services, our payable number is 529653. Account name tithe slash offering. If you'd like to use banking services, our bank is Standard Chartered. Account number 01020946989900. We'd like to thank you for your continued support even in these unprecedented times. The men's ministry would like to invite all men for a revival prayer service every Sunday from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Come one and invite your fellow brothers and sons. Now let's welcome our lead pastor, Rev. Tony Kiama, with the sermon. Praise the Lord and good morning. Welcome to this Sunday service. My name is Reverend Tony Kiama. I bring you greetings from me and my wife, Reverend Carol, the pastoral team, the deacon board, and the ministry leaders. Please receive them. We love you and we miss you. 
For those who are not part of the River of God Church, this is River of God in Nairobi, Kenya, in Parklands. And this is an Assemblies of God uh, congregation, or popularly known as Kenya Assemblies of God. And so we love you and we bless the Lord for the opportunity to share in his word. Let me take the opportunity to thank the worship team for leading us to the presence of the Lord. And may the Lord God remember you and bless you as you continue to lead us in Jesus' name. Let me also ask that we may stand on our feet in honor of the reading of God's word. And as we do so, I pray that God will minister to us. Hebrews, I mean, uh, Kings, 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings and chapter 20. As you stand, let us pray for the word and for the offering. Father, we don't take for granted that you are God alone, and we bless your holy name, and we pray that your name shall be exalted high and above all else. Jehovah, we continue to acknowledge that without you, we cannot make it. And so this morning, we pray that you would speak through me and to me, almighty God, and touch my lips as you touch Isaiah's, that your word will come to change us from the inside out, almighty God. And dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give, for being part of this, part of the service, Almighty God. And Lord, we don't take it for granted that you have given us. And now we, oh Lord, are enjoying in the privilege of giving back to you, Almighty God, to be connected and enjoined with you, Almighty God, in this opportunity, Almighty God, and the expansion of your kingdom. Father, I know that there are many out there who have nothing to give, but they desire to, to give. I pray that you would bless the works of their hands. That, Lord, you would provide for them. That next Sunday they will have something they will give Almighty God. What a privilege and an honor to worship you in our giving. We thank you and we bless you. We pray this because we believe and trust in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Kings chapter 20 and from verse 1 all the way to verse 11. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word. <clears throat> In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says, Put your house in order, because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully, and with wholehearted devotion, have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Before Isaiah had left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. This is what the Lord, the God of your father, David, says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. On the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord, I will add 15 years to your life, and I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my, for my sake and for the sake of my servant David. Verse 7. Then Isaiah said, Prepare a poultry of figs. They did so and applied it to the boil, and he recovered. Hezekiah had asked Isaiah, What will be the sign that the Lord will heal me, that I will go up to the temple of the Lord on the third day from now? Isaiah answered, This is, what, this is the Lord's sign to you, that the Lord will do what he has promised. Shall the shadow go forward ten steps, or shall it go back ten steps? It is a simple matter. For the shadow to go forward ten steps, said Hezekiah. The prophet Isaiah called upon the Lord, and the Lord made the shadow go back ten steps. It had... Let me repeat verse 11. Then the prophet Isaiah called upon the Lord, and the Lord made the shadow go back ten steps. It had gone down on the stairway of Ahaz. Praise the Lord. 
And I thank God for God's word. And in Jesus' name we read. Amen. Please have your seats. Let me begin today with telling you a story. About three years ago, November 25th, I got sick. I was at home. We did Bible study with my wife and kids. And after that, I went into my room and lay down. And the pain in my back became unbearable. Now, at this point, I had had three sur two surgeries on my back. And uh, the pain just got to a place where I just couldn't take it anymore. And this process, uh, or this situation, had begun about 20 years ago. And now here we are. Uh, Pastor Caro, my wife, took me to the clinic uh, at George Williamson on 4th Ngong Avenue. And I got there. And the doctor decided that I should be admitted so that they can manage the pain. And further, upon further investigations, you know, just find out why the pain. And so I went in. Uh, I was on morphine. And shortly after, I was admitted. And I was in hospital for eight days. Now, uh, during that season of eight days, I, I would pray and, and just wonder, God, when will you take this cup away from me? At what point? And as, as things went from, you know, bad to worst, go to a place where it was apparent, I would not find uh, help, affordable help, in that particular hospital. So I was airlifted to India. And when I got to India, for the first time in my life, I was scared of death. I felt if I go into theater this time around, I won't come out alive. And, and it's not a good place to be. And here, Hezekiah had an opportunity where God ha told him that you're going to die. You know, many of us, death has been hidden from us. We have no idea when that day will come. And so it comes as a surprise to the person uh, and everybody else. And, uh, you know, of course, when you're dead, you're dead. But even the people around you are, are shocked. And, and let me tell you something. Even when people are very, very sick, when they go to hospital, there's always an ounce of hope that I will come back. Even as they are being taken into ICU, you know, the relatives are like, you know what, I know he will come back. And, and even when they are falling sick, even when I was being taken to hospital, you know, I was saying, you know, when I come back, I will do this, I will do this. I had plans and, you know, you know aspirations. And, and no one ever at any point feels like, you know what, I'm going to die. It doesn't matter how sick you are. Even when the doctor says you have a few days, there's always that sense of hope that, you know what, there's a possibility that I will beat this. Why? Because we desire and love life. And that's a good thing. And, and hope keeps us alive. But this one time, I lay there, and I remember telling my wife, I, Carol, I don't have a good feeling. I, 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 I feel like if I go into theater, I won't come out. And of course, as a, as a lady who's born again, you know, she switched immediately to scripture. You shall live and not die. I don't want to say that. Please don't even confess death. And I was looking at her and telling her, you know, even the people who die, it's not because they are without faith. But you know what? When time comes, it has come. And I have this sense in my spirit that I'm not going to come out. And here, God told, sent Isaiah, son of Amos, to tell Hezekiah, put your house in order. And that's the topic for today. Is your house in order? Is your house in order. And just sharing from my story, I remember, you know, she got quite emotional and, and, and she began to cry. You know, here is, 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 you know, her husband, we are in a foreign country. And just the thought that, you know what, I came with my husband alive and I'm going to go back with him in a casket. I think for me, I, I may not understand because, you know, I'm not a wife, but I think as a spouse, that must be extremely heartbreaking. And I, I remember telling her, you know what, 
at this particular point, this is not for about crying. This is not about casting and confessing. This is about, let me give you the facts on the table. And I remember going through my mind and wondering, is there a thing, are there things about me that my wife doesn't know? And when I began to explain, you know, uh, if I was to die now, this is what you should do. You know, you need this and this and this, so I owe so and so this amount of money. And, you know, my organization, this is my pension, this is uh, my life insurance, this is, you know, this is what is, is I'm worth, this is where the title deed for here is. I have a piece of land here, I have this here, I have that there. And, and as I explained to her, you know, some of those things I, I thought she knew, but came to her as a surprise. And I told her, now, this is not about just hearing. I want you to write it down. Take note everything I'm saying, because I don't, ha don't know how much time I have. And I remember her taking a pen. And, and of course, we, we had to go back and forth because she didn't want to. She, she couldn't imagine that she was writing her husband's will. And it's at that particular point I blessed the Lord that I had even talked to my children prior to, this, to, to, to that. And I had walked with them and I told them, this is the piece of land I have and this is how it shall be subdivided. And I remember telling them, yours is on this side, yours is here and yours is at the end. And no one should, you know, push the other. Do you understand? Yes, this is how it should be divided and my land should never be sold. If you want to sell land, you buy yours and sell. I never want to get into a situation where my grandchildren have nowhere to build. Or they are chokoras in the city because they have nowhere. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And I am serious. Yes. And I remember my wife there saying, wow, are you planning to go somewhere? You know? And so a few years later, when now I'm in this situation, I remember just looking into her eyes. And, and I felt really sorry that I took her through that process. But I bless the Lord that we went through that. Because I don't know what tomorrow has in store for me. And now, there are no surprises for them. Because, let me tell you something. There's an institution that was established by government. And it was established out of necessity. It is called Unclaimed Assets Authority. The Unclaimed Assets Authority. And, and I want to tell you this, friends. You know, numbers don't lie. And the last three weeks, two weeks, we've been talking about the issues of marriage. And I think for me, it's just baffling. It, I, I can't understand why people get married. Sincerely speaking, why would you get married to this girl or to this man? And then you keep secrets where they have no idea how much you're worth, where this piece of land is and how much money you have in a bank or that secret bank account, where you don't even have an ATM card, you don't even have, you know, a checkbook. So no one has any idea that you have a Kampango account or, you know, you have like a secret account somewhere in a bank somewhere. You know, it, it just beats... And, and sometimes, Mark, I wonder, you know, do people just walk out of the house and you're just looking for, you know, anything that has a skirt so you marry? You know, there are no senses of love and trust. And let me tell you something. There is no way you can say you love someone if you don't trust them. If you don't trust someone, then don't love them. Do, don't marry them. Because where are you going, sincerely speaking? You know, you just left home, you know, you just went and found some Kinyangarika wearing a trouser and you also married. But anyway, birds of a feather flock together. Because Vinyangarikas hang out with Vinyangarikas. Because I am telling you, it saddens my heart. I wrote some things here. You know, as of June 2020, 60 companies, 60 companies, these are professionals who work in these 60 companies. 60 companies submitted unclaimed assets to the tune of 3.3 billion shillings. 3.3 billion shillings in unclaimed assets. Seriously? As in you're married to this man and you have money that they don't know about. And because you don't know when you will die, you just, you know, death comes. And no one knows how much you're worth. And here you are claiming that, oh, you know, I'm going to work for my children because I love them. But they have no idea that which 
you have worked for. Let me tell you something, friends. I want you to go into the bank and look into the eyes of all those people in that bank and tell me, are they your relatives? How much do you love those people who work in that bank? Because they are the people you are leaving that money to. Or some of these corrupt government officials that we don't like. Are they the ones that you are leaving that money to? Seriously speaking, I want you to go home and look at your children and ask yourself, everything you have worked for, for five years, for ten years, for thirty years, you know, they will never get a cent of that which you have worked for. Yet you purport to love them. Who are you lying to? Who are you lying to? If no one else in your life knows what you're worth or where it is or how much money you have, is it that you're embarrassed or are you afraid that this chick will up and live with all your money? Let me tell you something. That stereotype is a lie. In fact, it is sinful. When you assume that all women are materialistic and all men are dogs, that is not true. That is a lie from the devil. Just because two or three have done that doesn't mean that all of us are the same. Just because there was a Toyota that had an accident, does that mean that all Toyotas are prone to accidents? Just because there was a bus that had an accident, does that mean that now all the buses are prone to accidents? Nani buana, don't take us for a ride. So you come here tantalizing each other on a wedding day, but you're looking at each other, eh? If you can't trust them, you have no business marrying them. Because sincerely speaking, numbers don't lie. How can there be two million Kenyans have their monies in an account in Central Bank? Two million people. These two million people are husbands and wives, and they have money in the bank that their wife or their husband doesn't know about. This tells you something, that the institution of marriage today suffers greatly. Because people purport to love but not trust. They say, I love you, but trust is totally at a different level. Let me tell you something. Don't take us for a ride. If you don't trust someone, you don't love them. And so if you just walked out there, closed your eyes, you know, nyara, nyara, and you went to town doing like this, doing like this, and you tapped someone, you checked, oh, they have a trouser and you're a chick, you marry them. Seriously? Did you even think about marriage? And that's why I said the other day, People are going into marriage unprepared. And these are the consequences of those foolish decisions that you are making today. Here, driven by stereotypes in the society today. Let me tell you something, friends. When I shared with Pastor Caro everything, yes, she can up and go. But let me tell you something. She trusted me even more. And if you can't work on your salvation, then even your marriage is struggling. Because you should work at your marriage to keep it together. Because, friends, two million Kenyans have their monies, any hard earned cash. I want you to walk around the city today and see how many of you can just go and collect money. How many times, even today, you, even like 10 shillings, do you know you can walk the entire city today and not even pick a five shilling somewhere? Even a shilling. So I want you to imagine, you go to your bank account today, whether you have a thousand shillings, whether you have 10 million, whether you have 5 million, whether you have 100,000, however much you have. Can you imagine going to the bank and you take that money and you open the window of a car or a matatu and throw it out? It is unthinkable. You can't do that. Yet that is exactly what you're doing. When you go, you earn, you save, you buy things, you, you, know, you invest in the money market, you, you, know, you, you gather money. And you never tell anyone. And then, since you don't know the day of your death, and because you're not even a friend of God, because God, Yanni, you have lived a careless life. And let me tell you something, friends. He who does not treat his wife well, even your prayers are detestable before the Lord. And the Bible says that those who, are, who do the will of God, the Lord reveals to them things before they happen. So for you, you might not be in the category like Hezekiah, where God told Hezekiah, put your house in order. Two million Kenyans had not put their houses in order. Two million husbands and wives had not put their houses in order. And so that money is lying. It has become a headache for the government to try and trace where their administrators of their estates are. Shame on you. 
shame on you una mtoto wa mtu na umwambii kitu yeah you want to tell me that is the level that which we have come to hapo ndio tumefikishana that is why we have gotten to marriage you just marry someone because they are wearing a trouser you just go out there and find anyone that is wearing a skirt and so chua twende hey now your husband and wife ole wako Two million Kenyans. Friends, the unclaimed financial assets authority says that there are there is a hundred billion yet to be submitted as unclaimed assets. You know, it's it's mind boggling. A hundred billion Kenya shillings. A hundred <laughs> billion Kenya shillings. That is yet to be submitted to the unclaimed financial assets authority for sure the institution of marriage suffers stupidity because that's the only way i can explain it i'm telling you the truth ukweli may the lord have mercy safaricom mpesa claims claimed is uh, unclaimed assets are at financial assets are at 176 million the highest account has half a million <laughs> half a million pin number yako ni siri yako even to the one you love seriously who are you lying to who are you lying to so anyway back to my story i shared with pastor caro i shared the story and she wrote down things of course she's crying and and she's wondering you know what i don't care about this thing i told her you know it's not about you it's about the children that we have that they are father because the bible says is a righteous man a man who does that which is right in the eyes of the lord is called righteous a righteous man leaves an inheritance for his children's children for his children his grandchildren and his great grandchildren it doesn't matter the amount but the fact that you left something behind for them friends i i realize today that i have a responsibility to train my children as the administrators of my estate and it is sad it is sad when you look at your children it is sad when you look at your children and you wonder do they have capacity or let me even put it this way if you were to interview people who would take over your estate you say you put an ad in the newspaper and say i am looking for someone who i can live as the administrator of my estate and my estate is worth this amount and your children also apply would your children would you pick your children would they be qualified would they have the skills and the discipline needed to administrate your estate because in most cases and as we have seen in the recent past when politicians die who are worth colossal amounts of money they did not take time to disciple to train to mentor the administrators of their estate so what happens when they are gone because in their foolishness they are unable also to put their houses in order how careless can you be god gives you wealth and you don't even plan for it when you're not there so they don't even put their houses in order so after that it becomes drama in the new in the dailies in the newspapers on tv so and so is fighting this so and so is fighting this and that tells us that these leaders were actually foolish men and women these were just foolish men who led us no wonder our country is going to the dogs because we are being led by fools and it is unfortunate because we are the ones who are electing them to office we are electing fools every time every round. and when they die that is clearly exemplified by how they their estate money they have stolen from us may the lord have mercy on us and there are several questions that we need to ask ourselves number one who else knows about your assets 
Are you the only one who knows? You know, it is your best kept secret. You know how much is in which account, where the pieces of land are. You know, it's your best kept secret. It is just you and the Lord who know exactly where that is. And maybe some of the secrets why we don't even share is because we didn't get them in the right way. It's because we cannot even explain where we got this wealth from. Because we don't want to be held accountable. Because we are the man, you are the guy who wears a pants in your house. And you cannot be asked questions. Eh? You can't be talked to because, you know, eh, Jogo, you are the lion, the king of that kingdom. Eh? Eh? The king of Zamunda. Where is your wakwanza? We have seen many. Put your house in order. Number one, that question of Ajasas. Who else knows about your assets and what you're worth? Number two, how prepared are your administrators? How prepared are those who are taking over your estate? Either your wife or your children. Because you purport to love them. To go to work to fend for them. But you fend for them and keep it a secret. What is theirs? And friends, let me tell you something. May the Lord have mercy on us. May the Lord have mercy on us. James 4.17, if you know the good you ought to do and do it not, you sin. So how prepared are your administrators? And let me tell you something. This second question will bring, you know, a cold shiver down your spine. Because many of us have children but we have not raised them at all. We have not raised our children. I had a story the other day. Somebody died. And shortly after, the children sold their parents' matrimonial home. And all of them bought state-of-the-art vehicles. Range Rovers, BMWs, and four years down the road, those cars are, you know, on stones. How foolish. You spend your entire life building an empire. And then children, they sell a house to buy a Range Rover. As in that is the epitome of foolishness. As in Baka, you wonder, seriously, you are raised by so and so. Eh? For sure, masomo si akili. Eh, kuwa na masomo dae mini your wise. Because let me tell you something. Some of the mistakes that, that some of these elites are making, you wonder what they are taught in school. Am I they just crammed to pass exams? Ni toast. Toast. May the Lord have mercy. And I'm not here beating down education. I'm saying I think there is more to education than just cramming an exam. Maybe we need to change the entire education system in this country. Because for sure it is not helping us. The third question, number one, let me just take you back. Where, who else knows about your assets? Number two, how prepared are your administrators? Number three, when, when you get into deals, take time to document those deals. When you loan people money, when you get money from people, when you get into land deals, please make sure that you document. Take time to document your deals. Because when you're not there, there will be no evidence. There will be no evidence. There's a family not too far from here. For 10 years, the children went to school without shoes. Literally. They were kicked out of school every so often. The wife suffered greatly, yet their dad, their father, had a life insurance policy worth 10 million. In fact, they got to find out 20 years later that that policy was there. 20 years of pure and diluted suffering just because you thought your wife, your wife was not as educated or you thought your wife was greedy, or whatever the reason or situation, it is unjustified that these children suffered for 20 years. Yes, they, yet there was more than enough for them to live comfortable for the rest of their life. 
shame on you. And may the Lord have mercy on us. So when you get into deals, take time to document. And this begs, I beg to ask this question. When couples sit at home, what do you guys talk about? No, seriously speaking. When you sit at home, what do you talk about? Couples, I'm talking to you. When you are seated at home, what is this you talk about? At Woli. Yeah? That is the essence and the limit of your discussions. At Woli. Happen your Mefikisha discussions are marriage. At Woli. Up. There. Hey. Yeah. There, and tribalism, or oh, BBI. How will BBI help your children when you're gone? By the way, let me remind you. We don't have leaders in this country. We have tribal chiefs. And they keep dividing us on tribal lines. Today, it is the Kikuyu and the Nandi, then the Luo and the Kamba. Then the next five years, it will be the Kikuyu and the, eh, and the Luo and the Nandi and the Kamba. You know, they keep shuffling us like this, like draft. Yeah. And then the foolish Kenyans keep following. Oh, on this side. Oh, on this side. Oh, on this side. They choose for you who to love and who to hate. That is the essence of a foolish nation. And we shall continue to waste away until the day we wake up and say, enough is enough. Until the day we call out these tribal chiefs. That is the day this country will enjoy the freedom that we got in 1963. May God have mercy on us. So what do you talk about when you're at home as a couple? The amount of salt in your food. Hmm? That is where you are. Talking about Selena. Eh? Eh? Happened to you a discussion. Sindio? Lamuye. The rich also cry. Oh, how sad. Oh, she cried. There, eh, wrestling. Kubung, kubung. That's the essence of your discussion. Eh, your marital discussions are limited to the issues that are on the news bulletin that day. That is the essence of your discussion and the future of your marriage. Shame on you. Zima TV, put the newspaper aside and discuss real issues. Issues that affect your marriage. For example, if there are conflict issues, and I know many of us men don't want to discuss those things, we would rather sweep them under the carpet and give ourselves shugulis. Rubbish. May the Lord have mercy. And I know it might sound harsh, but it is the truth, and I am calling it as it is. Let me tell you something, friends. Kenya will still be there. What the question I'm asking is, what state will your children be in that Kenya? In that Kenya that you're so concerned about. Because apart from you, no one cares about your children. Remember that. Remember that. If you can't tell your spouse about your money, if you can't share with your spouse about your wealth, then I don't see the reason why you're getting married in the first place. If you're looking at someone and at the back of your mind, even as you're getting married, you don't talk about issues of money and investments and assets, even as you're coming in, then friends, you have no business getting married. Let everybody go back to their parents. Because you're giving marriage, this institution, a bad name. Because why? Why would you even seek to get married? May the Lord have mercy on us. And may this figure go down in Jesus' name. The figure of two million Kenyans who their money is lying idle in an account somewhere because their families have no idea that that money is there. And this begs to, you know, which means it's not just shillings and cents. There might be flats in Kileleshua or in Dandora or in Kayole or wherever. You know, there are buildings who... When the owners die, the families have no idea. Like the story I told you the other day. This husband who had been paying rent to an agent, yet the building belongs to the wife. Now if the wife died, the agent becomes the new owner of that building. What a shame that your children would live on the street because you don't trust your husband. If you sleep with someone, 
Yani your money is more important than your body. You'd rather share your body with someone but not your money. As in how far have we fallen? What kind of marriages are we living in? What kind of people are getting married? What reasons are driving people to marriage? Because for sure, let me tell you something. I, I, I am shocked and scared, petrified. I'm wondering what's going on? Where are we going as a nation, as a church of Jesus Christ? Where are we going? We are headed to hell, literally. Because if that is the case, then the scripture says that the Lord brought them together so that because God was seeking a godly offspring. No wonder we are not raising godly children. We are, we are raising lazy brats, entitled brats. That's what we are doing. Why? Because the foundation is wrong. May the Lord have mercy on us. And I challenge you, as Hezekiah was told, put your house in order. And I am telling you today, find the courage to switch off that TV. Kenya will still be there even if you don't watch news for one day. Switch it off once a week and discuss the issues of this marriage. Discuss where are we going, the future of your children, the future of you as a couple. By the way, talking about death doesn't necessarily mean you'll die. We had that discussion in 2017. I didn't die. The Lord was gracious. He spared my life. But I thank God for that scare because it made me share with my wife things I would never have shared with her. And so I'm challenging you. You might not have a death scare like I did, but take time right now and walk your children through what you're worth. Because let me tell you something, friends. Some of you will have your children on the street begging for bread. Not because you didn't work hard, but because you are foolish. Because you are scared of sharing with your wife and with your children. Because they will take it away from you. Seriously? Then if you are afraid that they will leave, you married wrong. That's the truth. You married wrong. Because you didn't do your homework. You just walked out there, you saw a trouser and got married. Or you just went there and you're just looking for anything in a skirt, web and daddy. Pungulu! May the Lord have mercy on us. And especially in the church of Jesus Christ, it is time for us to tell each other the truth. It is time for these numbers to change. Because, friends, it is shameful that there is close to a billion Kenya shillings in unclaimed assets. These are husbands and wives. And because the day of death is unknown to man, that was hidden to us, prepare yourself. Put your house in order. That doesn't mean you're dying. It doesn't. It is just wisdom. It is just wisdom. And may the Lord God help us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Almighty God, that you will come and reign and rule in our homes. Father, may you speak to our hearts, Almighty God, and for us who are married, that we shall set a good example. And for the churches today, to be more concerned with the people than with their offering. Oh God, that the truth shall be taught. That pastors, deacons, the elders of mighty God, the men's ministry, the women's ministry, we shall engage in preparing our young people for marriage. Jehovah, in the name of Jesus Christ, that we shall, sh like iron sharpens iron, we shall sharpen one another. Even as, O oh Lord, because we have trusted you for great wealth, we have trusted you for breakthrough, we have desired, Almighty God, and petitioned that you would bless the works of our hands. Yet when you have given it to us, some of us have become so careless that at the point of death, we have left it to no one. It is here, Almighty God, and I know that numbers don't lie. Jehovah, may you forgive us. Forgive us as a country, forgive us as a church, that there is a, close to a billion Kenya shillings, a, a, a hundred billion Kenya shillings in unclaimed assets. Father, forgive us. Forgive us, Almighty God, because you have been faithful. You have been faithful. But it is us in the church of Jesus Christ who have been foolish. And may you have mercy on us. In your wrath, remember mercy, O Lord. O God. 
Help us. Help me as a minister that I will teach the truth. That I will not shy of calling the spade a spade. And Lord, that we, men of the cloth, we shall not just preach the truth, but we shall live it. We shall be an example of that which we preach. That we shall also be willing to be held accountable. Not tell people, thing, preach wine, preach, preach uh, 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 wine, I mean water, yet we are taking wine. Father, may you have mercy on us. And forgive us, almighty God, that your name shall be exalted. We pray this because we believe and trust in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord have mercy on us. May he shine his face upon you. May his favor be evident over your life. May none of your bones ever be broken. May that which is yours that the devil has taken or touched, may you be paid back a hundredfold. May the peace of God that surpasses human understanding keep your hearts. And may the joy of the Lord be your portion. And may it fill every inch of your home. Remember you have the power of life and death on your tongue. Choose to speak life over the issues that surround your life over the nation of Kenya and the nation of Israel, and as the Lord may lead you, not forgetting, on every road you travel on, declare that on this road today, no one will lose their life or have their property destroyed. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. I love you as your pastor and put your house in order. Amen. Jina la Yesu Ningo me yangu Jina la Yesu Ningo me yangu Nitamka po jina hilo Kome nyuni na sina Nitamka po jina hilo Kome nyuni na sina Jina la Yesu Ningo me yangu Jina la Yesu Jina la Yesu Jina la Yesu Ningo me yangu Nita mkapo Jina hilo Kome nyingine sina Nita mkapo Jina hilo Kome nyingine sina Jina la Yesu Jina la Yesu Ningo me yangu Jina la Yesu Jina la Yesu Jina la Yesu Ningo me yangu Nita mkapo Jina hilo
mkapo Ita mkapo jina hilo Kome nyingine sina Ni tamka po, 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 